past year or so, well, actually about two years, a lot of times clients say, now look, we want a fundamental class in risk management. We want the traditional approach. By the way, while you're at it, could you also, you know, weave in a little bit of what's going on with Agile? Well, I think that's a very sound idea. After all, you want to know what the fundamentals are, and you also want to be able to see how it interacts with the iterative approach that is Agile Project Management. The thing is, Inevitably, what I find in classes is that people have confused Agile with faster. Come on. You can't tell me that you don't have a dictionary app on your phone. Look up the definition of Agile, of agility. Doesn't mean faster as a whole. It means being able to course correct more quickly. It means being able to adjust to changing environments, changing requirements, changing legislation, changing worlds, and changing circumstances. And well, you get the picture. But it means being able to shift your direction, sometimes ever so slightly, sometimes massively, in a more responsive, fashion. In effect, yes, you can adjust more quickly. You can adjust faster. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the entire project's life cycle is going to be faster. Does that mean that you shouldn't do risk management because it's just going to stand in the way? No. The beauty of Agile project management and risk management and that relationship is that certain considerations and whoever the product owner is get addressed on a pretty regular basis. And that, ah, oh, that is my favorite, is when it's being done on a very iterative basis. And within an Agile project management framework, it can be done quite naturally as and practically built into the DNA without a lot of serious mumbo jumbo or overdone complications. So inevitably the other question comes up and this one I am very, very strong minded about. Well, if we're gonna use risk management and agile, how come you have us doing two different kinds of analysis? It doesn't sound very agile to me. The first type of analysis that you do in risk management is just to make sure that you have some sort of prioritization going on. Now, I don't know, maybe your projects have single or only double digit risk events in their risk register. And if that's the case, more power to you, unless of course it's that way because you're accidentally missing something, but we won't go there. Uh, for a great number of my colleagues in the project management community, especially those who are managing those projects that have, well, shall we say a lot of zeros behind them. There aren't just 20 or 40 risk events identified. There are hundreds of risk events identified for potentially every one of the competing demands. A uh, ton of scheduling risks. Oh my God, the cost risks. Oh, hmm, we don't have people with the right talent. There goes the quality. See what I'm getting at? So that very first analysis, which is a pretty broad brush, by the way, gives us the opportunity to prioritize them. Are you really going to have the time to try to manage 1,572 risks? That wasn't even on one of my big projects. It gives me a headache just thinking about it. Now, so you want to address the risks where you can do the best job for your client, for the project, for your senior leadership team, for the entire organization. In order to do that, you need to be able to prioritize, and that's all that the first analysis is intended to do. 
once you prioritize them though, now we start get needing to get into the nitty gritty of the things, you know, time, money, figuring out how we're going to handle the potential impact. Can we do something to minimize threats and maximize opportunities? But by then we're focusing on just the risks that we need to focus on. So we've done the course correction and by making sure that we do both types of analysis on risks on a regular basis as they're identified, we continue to do course corrections. After all, you never know. Something might come up in month three that kicks what we thought was the number one risk right off the top of the list and takes its place. Because risks are born throughout the life cycle of the project, throughout the different sprints, from sprint to sprint. It's also the circumstances that create the environment in which a risk will die. <sighs> there have been days when retiring a risk off the risk register because it's no longer in effect might be the most positive thing that happens all day. Hopefully not too often, but every once in a while, there's a great deal of satisfaction saying, no, we can retire that one. We can retire that one. That one never came to be and now has no hope of it. Mark it off the risk register. I would encourage you, whether you're looking at the number of kinds of analyses that we recommend for risk management or the number of times that something is going to have to go through quality management processes, not to think of the number as the important point for the agility relationship to whatever it is you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Instead, look at what it accomplishes and ask yourself, does this add to our ability to do a course correction at a better level of detail in a quicker manner so that we don't go too far down the road on a road we have no business being on to begin with. So two kinds of analysis doesn't sound very agile to you. Think about it. Agility, the ability to shift direction, to course correct more quickly and more early. Now, something that allows you to prioritize so that when you do a more quantifiable analysis, you're only focusing on the things that you need to. You've course corrected out of what could have been a massive list to just the important list. Sounds pretty agile to me. Leadership driven project management is based on some key success parameters and risk management is absolutely one of them. And while we focus on what that means for relationships, I want you to think about this. No matter how strong your relationship is, there are certain things you're going to want to be able to manage with a great deal of competency or that strong relationship that's founded on trust may falter. So risk management is a way of keeping those relationships strong. And here's the cool part. You're keeping those relationships strong by doing exactly the right thing. I'm Kimi Hirotsuzimski. Thanks for joining us. This video was brought to you by the Leadership Driven Project Management Academy, and we look forward to seeing you again sometime soon.